Grade 8, Quiz 17, excerpt from the Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden. Paragraph 1. In our little fishing village of Yorido, I lived in what I called a tipsy house. It stood near a cliff where the wind off the ocean was always blowing. As a child, it seemed to me as if the ocean had caught a terrible cold because it was always wheezing and there would be spells when it let out a huge sneeze, which is to say there was a burst of wind with a tremendous spray. I decided our tiny house must have been offended by the ocean sneezing in its face from time to time and took to leaning back because it wanted to get out of the way. Probably it would have collapsed if my father hadn't cut a timber from a wrecked fishing boat to prop up the eaves which made the house look like a tipsy old man leaning on a crutch. Paragraph 2. Inside this tipsy house, I lived something of a lopsided life. Because my earliest years, I have very much like my mother, and hardly at all like my father or older sister. My father said it was because we were made just the same, she and I. And it was true. We both had the same peculiar eyes of a sort you almost never see in Japan. Instead of being dark brown, like everyone else's, my mother's eyes were a translucent gray, and mine are just the same. When I was very young, I told my mother I thought someone had poked a hole in her eyes and all the ink had drained out, which she thought was very funny. The fortune tellers said her eyes were so pale because of too much water in her personality, so much that the other four elements were hardly present at all. In this, they explained, was why her features matched so poorly. People in the village often said she ought to have been extremely attractive because her parents had been. Well, a peach has a lovely taste and so does a mushroom, but you can't put the two together. This was a terrible trick nature had played on her. She had her mother's pouty mouth and her father's angular jaw, which gave the impression of a delicate picture with much too heavy a frame and her lovely gray eyes were surrounded by thick lashes that must have been striking on her father, but in her case only made her look startled. Paragraph 3. My, father, my mother always said she'd married my father because she had too much water in her personality, and he had too much wood in his. People who knew my father understood right away what she was talking about. Water flows from place to place quickly and always finds a crack to spill through. Wood, on the other hand, holds fast to the earth. In my father's case, this was a good thing, for he was a fisherman, and a man with wood in his personality is at ease on the sea. In fact, my father was more at ease on the sea than anywhere else, and never left it far behind him. He smelled like the sea even after he had bathed. When he wasn't fishing... He sat on the floor in our dark front room, mending a fishing net. And if a fishing net had been a sleeping creature, he wouldn't even have awakened it at the speed he worked. He did everything this slowly. Even when he summoned a look of concentration, you could run outside and drain in the bath in the time it took him to rearrange his features. His face was very heavily creased and into each crease he had tucked some worry or other, so that it wasn't really his own face any longer, but more like a tree that had nests of birds in all the branches. He had to struggle constantly to manage it, and always looked worn out from the effort. Paragraph 4. When I was six or seven, I learned something about my father I'd never known. One day I asked him, Daddy, why are you so old? He hoisted up his eyebrows at this so that they formed little sagging umbrellas over his eyes. And he let out a long breath and shook his head and said, I don't know. When I turned to my mother, she gave me a look, meaning she would answer the question for me another time. The following day, without saying a word, she walked me down the hill toward the village and turned a path into a graveyard in the woods. She led me to three graves in the corner and three white markers posts much taller than I was. They had stern looking black characters written up to top, top to bottom on them 
They hadn't attended the school in our little village long enough to know where one ended and the next began. My mother pointed to them and said, Natsu, wife of Sakamoto Minora. Sakamoto Minora was the name of my father. Died age 24 in the 19th year of Miji. Then she pointed to the next one. Jinishiro, son of Sakamoto Minora, died age 6 in the 19th year of Miji. And to the next one, which was identical except for the name, Masao, in the age which was three. It took me a while to understand that my father had been married before, a long time ago, and that his whole family had died. I went back to those graves not long afterward and found, as I stood there, that sadness was a very heavy thing. My body weighed twice what it had only a moment earlier as if those graves were pulling me down toward them. Question 1. Reread these lines from paragraph 3. His face was hev very heavily creased. In each crease, he had tucked some worry or other, so that it wasn't really his own face any longer, but more like a tree that had nests of birds in all the branches. He had to struggle constantly to manage it and always looked worn out from the effort. In these sentences, the author vividly describes the narrator's father's wrinkled face. Which statement best describes what the imagery reveals about the narrator's father? A. He is very old, as old as the oldest trees. B. He is an attractive old man. C. He finds taking care of so many birds difficult. D. He has faced many challenges in his lifetime. 2. Which detail best supports a theme of this excerpt? A. Inside this tipsy house, I live something of a lopsided life. Paragraph 2. B. Water flows from place to place quickly and always finds a crack to spill through. Paragraph 3. C. When he wasn't finishing, he sat on the floor in our dark front room mending a fishing net. Paragraph 3. D. One day I asked him, Daddy, why are you so old? Paragraph 4. 3. The reader can infer that the narrator's mother is characterized by mismatched opposites. The detail from paragraph 2 of the excerpt that best supports this inference is A. Because my earliest years I was very much like my mother and hardly at all like my father or older sister. B. Instead of being dark brown like everyone else's, my mother's eyes were a translucent gray and mine are just the same. C. People in the village often said she ought to have been extremely attractive because her parents had been. D. Well, a peach has a lovely taste and so does a mushroom, but you can't put the two together. This was the terrible trick nature had played on her. 4. Reread these sentences from paragraph 4. I went back to those graves not long afterward and found as I stood there that sadness was a very heavy thing. My body weighed twice what it had only a moment earlier, as if those graves were pulling me down toward them. These sentences, A, describe a supernatural shift in the narrator's weight at the cemetery. B, describe a tangible feeling of sadness and loss. C, describe how the narrator felt her mother's sadness. D, describe the future death of the narrator. Five. How does the narrator feel about her father? Use two details from the text to support your answer. 